we squared up to each other and I wanted revenge. He'd made me look like the elephant man and there was no way I was going to lay down and take it. Rage filled my head and I wanted to kill him. I attacked him with as much venom as I could. I was connecting with some good shots. And to be honest, I think I shocked him. I screamed at him as I rained blows into him. He responded and counterpunched. Everyone in the street was shouting and screaming. And one of the neighbours said the police were on the way. The fighting stopped briefly. And he told everyone to get in their cars and do one. My first real task came on my first New Year's Eve. There had been a minor skirmishes throughout the night. There was nothing to write home about. At the end of the night, a local restaurant owner came in with his entourage. At the time, he was considered a bit of a handful. By all accounts, a good amateur boxer. I knew who he was, everyone did, but he didn't know me. When we were clearing the club, I asked the, the owner who was staying back, with it being New Year's Eve, and he told me no one was staying, everyone out. I went over to ask the restaurant owner and his small group of people to ask them to make their way outside. The restaurant guy's chef, who was just sat down, looked at me, stuck a lit cigarette in my face and laughed. I jumped back in pain and leapt forward, cracking him right on the jaw. He flew off his chair and landed in a crumpled heap, about three feet from where he'd been sitting. I moved forward and was about to perform Michael Flatley's river dance on his head, when out the corner of my eye, I noticed Mr. Restaurant steaming at me. Like I said, he had a reputation for being a bit of a lad, so I turned to front him. He landed with a left hook on my temple, and for a second I saw a white flash. I quickly returned fire, connecting with a right hand, and then people jumped in to separate us. He was mates with the nightclub owner, who was trying to calm him down, and I was told to go into the reception area to try and defuse the situation. While I was there, everything seemed to calm down. Mr. Restaurant came walking through and said, Who do you think you are? I could see it was going to go off again. He then said, I'll bite your nose off. Just as he was finishing his sentence, I sent him flying backwards with a cracking punch. He nearly went over the counter. Then I attacked again. It didn't last long though, as everyone split us up again. He was raging. He'd come into the club on this New Year's Eve and this young dormer had knocked his chef out and was now attacking him. I could see he wanted to teach me a lesson, but I wasn't having any of it. The situation was going from bad to worse and they couldn't seem to calm him down. By this time, the club was nearly empty, so I was told to get myself home, leaving Mr. Restaurant in the club to calm down. I was raging myself. I was only a young lad and fresh on the doors, but I was no shitbag and I wasn't prepared to take any shite off anyone. I went home and was having a drink with my friend Mickey, Ian the head doorman where I worked and our various partners when the door went. My lass at the time looked through the blinds and she said, panicking, Paul, they're outside. I immediately jumped up and sure enough, Mr. Restaurant had come to my front door and there were five or six cars outside. I thought, here we go. I quickly picked up two coshes that I kept by the front door and opened it. The street was filled with his entourage and I knew he wanted to sort out the earlier business. Put the coshes down, he said, and we'll sort this out. I stood still with coshes in both hands and didn't give him a reaction. I surveyed the situation and wondered what my best course of action would be. Should I just go berserk with the coshes or should I wait for them to attack? He repeated, put the coshes down and we'll have a one-on-one. -on -one. No one will join in. I thought for a second and then instead of dropping the coshes and keeping my guard up, like a silly idiot, I bent down to place them on the floor. It was a mistake I would never make again. Whack! He hit me with a crunching uppercut and I felt my nose shatter. I was stunned for a second or so, just enough time for him to launch a full-scale attack on my head. It was raining lefts and rights down on me as quick as he could and trying to half kill me. I could see white flashes before my eyes as each punch connected. The blows weren't hurting me, but I couldn't compose myself because they were coming that fast. One of my eyes was nearly closed now and I thought he'd soon stop, but the attack continued. I could hear all his mates shouting, Go on, kill him! I wasn't scared or anything like that. I just needed to try to launch a counter, but I was shaky on my legs due to the number of punches I was, was receiving. He must have got sick of punching me because he grabbed my head with both hands and sunk his teeth into my nose and gashed it. I still have a scar to this day. Then he stood back and right-handed me for good measure. He stood back and screamed abuse at me. I wasn't listening. I was two days. What seemed like a couple of minutes passed and I started to sort myself out. He was giving it the usual. Don't ever mess with me and all that shine. My face was swollen. I was bleeding. Not a pretty sight. I just had a good hiding. So as you can imagine, 
I was pretty down. Down, but not out. I regained my composure and said, come on then, you arsehole. He looked at me for a second and I could see he wanted more. He must have been thinking, I've just whacked this young, young and all over and now he wants it again. By this time, Arthur Street was out watching. It was New Year's Eve, so everyone was still up. All his mates were shouting the same shite. Give him it again, go on, and such like. We squared up to each other and I wanted revenge. He made me look like the elephant man and there was no way I was going to lay down and take it. Rage filled my head and I wanted to kill him. I attacked him with as much venom as I could. I was connecting with some good shots and to be honest, I think I shocked him. I rain blows into him. He responded and counterpunched. Everyone in the street was shouting and screaming and one of the neighbours said the police were on the way. The fighting stopped briefly and he told everyone to get in their cars and get off. He was left with just one of his mates and he wanted to fight on. I felt more confident now. While all his mates were there, I would have been on to a loser. If I'd beaten him in front of them, all I would have probably been attacked from all sides. We squared up again and I was off Mark like a flash. I hit him with a cracking straight right, which sent him off his feet and over a small bush in the garden. I could have easily jumped on his head or kicked him while he was down, but I let him get back up. We fought like cat and dog for what seemed like an eternity. Both of us were exhausted and looked like we'd gone 10 rounds of a JCB. We were both bleeding from just about everywhere. Nose, lips, eyes, you name it. Both my eyes were nearly shut, as were his. We both knew we weren't getting anywhere, and in the end just looked at each other and laughed. It was strange, I know. we just rearranged each other's faces, and now we were laughing at each other. He told me I was a game bastard and held his hand out for me to shake. I refused. The girlfriend I was with at the time was crying and said, Paul, please shake his hand. She was obviously frightened. I still refused. He said to me, if you shake my hand, it'll be forgotten about. If you don't, it'll continue at a later stage. I was too messed up to fight on, but I still refused his hand and said, whatever. He left with his mate and I returned to the house. My nose was bitten and broken. Both eyes were nearly shut. I was in a daze and everyone told me to go to hospital. No, I said, I need a drink. I never, never did go to hospital and a week later I was good looking again. This was one of the hardest fights I've ever had. And even though he battered me senseless at first, there was no way I would have backed down. Never have, never will. Respect though, Mr. Restaurant. It was a tough guy. So that was The Brick talking in his book about a fight with a restaurateur who was a bit of a lad and an ex-boxer from all accounts, who was definitely, uh, from that account, up for the fight. And it seems quite a um, an honest appraisal. I wasn't there. You know, he, he admits that he took a bit of a, a beating at first, but managed to get back at him. I'd be interested to know from my northeast subs, if any of you witnessed the fight, who the restaurateur was, because clearly it would have been well known. This would have been, I would imagine, late 80s, mid to late 80s. Um, so, yeah, it'd be fascinating to know who the actual guy was he was fighting with. Clearly, he hasn't mentioned his name in the book. What I found interesting about this book, and they were uh, around at the same time, there's no mention of Lee Duffy, not one mention of him. So I don't know what that was about. I know Lee did... Uh, from what I'm told, Lee did run with the Middlesbrough's firm, football firm, for periods of time, you know, on and off, and he joined in if people came into the city um, causing issues. But no no uh, talk of him at all, so I don't know whether, I don't know if any of you in the comments can enlighten me to whether they were friends, enemies, if they'd had any bother themselves, both tough men, clearly. Yeah, it'd be really good to know that. So I'm relying on the North East subs or anyone else who knew the people to fill me in on that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, smash the likes out there and hit the subscribe and you'll be notified for the next videos. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, 4 p.m. Without fail, we'll now be uploading and potentially on a Sunday we'll do deeper dives. Okay, take care.